Who's your caddy? All right, guys, welcome back to Movie Nights. We're with <laughs> Phelan and Matthew this time. We picked a really good one. Uh, who is your caddy? For uh, that's the long form. Who's your caddy? Who's your caddy? <laughs> that's the white people way of saying it. Who is your caddy? So, what do you guys think? Who is giving a shit? <laughs> no one in this movie. Uh, oh, good lord. This was um, absolutely uh, atrocious. It really was. I mean, that that was a tough set. It, it really <laughs> Not, None of us had seen this before watching this today. I just said, what's a really terrible movie? So, let's watch Who's Your Caddy. And it certainly lived up to that expectation. <laughs> you said it was like number 28 on the bottom 100? Yeah, 28 out of the bottom 100 on IMDb. Yeah. Nominated for a Razzie Award as well for Worst Remake or Ripoff or something like that. So, yeah, yeah, and there was an award for Worst uh, Male Character. Yeah. <laughs> it could be any of them. It didn't say which one it, it was, but it could apply to literally any of the guys in this movie. Does the amazing thing of not having real characters, and you're like, when's the movie start? And you're like, no, it's just kind of the shitty and golf then, <laughs> sketch. And then we realize it's like 38 minutes in, we're like, oh, I guess it's not coming. Yeah. <laughs> you're like, um, okay, it's going to stop at some point and actually introduce us to I mean, no, that's not well, coming. That's not important. It's the very first scene where you kind of get the impression of, oh, okay, they've got this idea for a movie. They don't really have anything beyond that. They're just going to stretch this out for 90 minutes because we get, oh, here's our main character, this rap mogul named C-Note. Here's the snobby Jeffrey Jones guy. Movie. The one, the only, C-Note. South side. South side. I'm sorry, Mr. Note, I, I don't watch much MTV. <laughs> yeah. Basically, you just have to laugh at the fact that black people don't normally play golf. Classical music, and then, oh, I'll smash him with rap music. Oh, I get a little different. That's literally the first thing that happens yeah. after the studio logo, which is uh -huh. ironic juxtaposition. But it's not even uh. like good ironic juxtaposition, and they do it so often to yeah. pad the movie out, because the all together with credits, it's an hour and a half, but if you take away the four minute ending <laughs> credits and like intro, it's about an hour twenty, maybe a little more than that. Um, and they don't even have enough material to fill that out. Here's some of the material right on the back there. This guy making faces. That's hilarious. Oh, fart. All he does in that intro scene is just repeat what other people say and make noises. Speak that shit. Bam. Bam. Very stringent application process. Stringent. We have a five-year waiting list. A five-year waiting list. Of over 600 very qualified candidates. Very qualified. That's his stick throughout the entire movie, phase on love. I've seen him in other things where he actually bothers to act, where it's here is like, well, I'm getting paid, how about I just repeat everyone's lines with stupid voices? Yeah. Oh, and let's not forget the classic scene where he farts three times in very quick succession. <laughs> who directed this didn't understand what the rule of three is and no. just thought just fart three times in a row and then it's funny. I mean it's really funny after the first one went on for about a minute. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's like, are they trying to just like do one fart to the entirety of like the Blazing Saddles fart scene? Mm -hmm. Is that what's going on here? <laughs> And his other thing is, he's gonna bone Jeffrey Jones' wife. And it never happens, though. No, There's it's no just, chaos. he does a bunch of, like, disgusting things, and they'll cut, and they're like... Her personality is breasts. Yeah. Yes. This movie's great for women. You wouldn't it even really... know she was married to the snobby golf club owner if they didn't have that one scene with them together. Otherwise, yeah. like, she'd just the... be some random woman. At the very start of the movie, she pops up, and he's in the bathroom, he's getting dressed, and she's trying to get his attention, and she she strips off her clothes, but of course this is a PG-13 movie, so side boo. Mm -hmm. 
there's a lot of shit in here for like a PG-13 yeah. movie, but it feels like a, an R-rated movie that was neutered into PG-13, mm. and it feels like it would have been a, honestly a better movie if they'd just gone full R with it. I don't know, because if they went full R with what they have here, it would have been... Because it's already kind of jarring, all the PG-13, you know, strip clubs. The camera is constantly going up people's asses or <laughs> focusing on on breasts, uh -huh. like, like low-cut cleavage tops. I mean, all of that sort of stuff is there. But I can imagine that would feel even more sleazy just because... I would imagine an R-rated movie, it would just be loads and loads of people walking around topless. It, yeah. would, it would be sleazy, but it would be something. And it mm. feels like a lot of this it movie is just It probably would have been the same movie, though, just with more uh, tits and swearing. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I guess. At, at least they gave more fucks, so I guess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you get plenty of ass in this. Yeah. Uh, N-word getting thrown around pretty liberally. That, yeah. that was an education for me. I wasn't aware you could say it that many times in a PG-13 movie, but yeah. apparently you can. Don't and say fuck, but you can drop that. He, apparently, the only time that it made sense was the most uncomfortable one, where they have Andy Milanakis say it, because uh, it's funny, because white guy! Off the grill, my nigga! But they have uh, one character who's... It's very love again. Joke. He just keeps, he keeps saying that, doesn't it? We always have a spot in the yard for an enterprising young man who can carry a bag. What? What? Did he call you a nigga? This movie is super awkward when it comes to the comedy, because obviously it's playing the sort of race and sort of class, and it's just pulse freezingly uncomfortable, especially when they drop the n-word and it's meant to be the joking of itself. It's mm -hmm. like, no, I really don't want to laugh at that, to be honest. <laughs> well, even the stuff that might have been funny, the timing, they, they set up all of the jokes a million miles away, yeah. so you have plenty of time to know what's going to happen. But sometimes there's just no punchline at all. No. Um, and even some of the things in the credits, the bloopers, which are, well, they weren't bloopers, they were just cut things, yeah. were punchlines they cut out. <laughs> so even if there were things that had punchlines, they're not in the movie. Can you hook my boy up with some backstage passes? I think he's trying to get his pimp thing together. Hey, thanks a lot. All right, peace, buddy. Hey. How you doing? Still breastfeeding? You want some candy, little boy? Yeah. <laughs> Still breastfeeding? I'm still on the bottle. Breast milk. There's a wonderful moment in the movie where someone is feeding a horse weed, and yeah. before a croquet game, you think, oh man, there's going to be some wackiness here. <laughs> and then there's no punchline to that whatsoever. So you've just yeah. given, given that horse a very Wasting expensive Wasting a feed. lot of money, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Waste of And money. there's a very similar joke where a woman eats a brownie. We all know it's a pot brownie. Then they just, they linger on it. The guy's yeah. like, ho, oh, ho, I made my special brownies. And it's like, we know already it, and then you never see your high so it's like the, well, the movie is like watching a car crash in slow motion the jokes are so slow uh, <laughs> they, they, I feel like a car crash would be funnier yeah, speaking <laughs> of a telegraph joke was the cult car crash <laughs> with <fate. laughs> where he goes flying in the air it's like oh it's gonna land on Jeffrey Jones a minute later he's still in the <laughs> air oh, 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 whack and then, of course, we all know when you're in a crash and you land on someone, they're the only one who got hurt, so he gets up and like, oh, I'm fine. There's so many times in this movie, they should have been arrested or sued or have all this shit yeah. happen to them, and yeah. you can't really side with the good guys in this movie because... <laughs> you can't side with anyone, really. They're no. all such unlikable asshats. Because we find out the reason that this rap mogul and his entourage, I guess, the reason that they want to be part of this golf club is because C-Note's dad used to be a caddy there, and he was there for 40 years, and he was the best golfer, and that's why he got kicked out, because he was better than Jeffrey Jones. And so, it's... they try to be emotional with this and tried to have like a human side to it that he really he's this is sort of like um what's at stake is his dad's reputation and trying to like make that up for him and get mm -hmm. his like his record put in there and all that um and yet this is the plot and they call this movie who's your caddy mm -hmm. yeah that's the joke of it yeah <laughs> But the first, it just seems like he very pettily wants to get in this golf club with a bunch of assholes. Yeah. And he's yeah. like, I'll drop five million on a house, buy this golf club just so I can own part of the land. And yeah. be like, oh shit, he's wedged himself in, we gotta let him in. Like, 
they do a fantastically shitty job of not establishing anything at the outset of the movie. So you just you spend the first portion of the movie going confused yeah. over what is supposed to be happening or why anyone is supposed to care. And mm-hmm. then when the stakes are established, it's well po- beyond the point where you'd actually give a shit about anything. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, like at one point when Jeffrey Jones finds out that that's what was going on, he's like, "Is that what this is about?" That's what this is all about. Like, he's yeah. kind of voicing the audience, like, really? Yeah. That's the plot we're going with? It's yeah. one of those movies where it feels like too big of a gear shift when they try to throw in the serious yeah. bits. You're like, what? what? What's going on? <laughs> it's called Who's Your Caddy? Don't uh-huh. go serious with this. Uh-huh. You can't even do comedy right. Let's not try to do drama for fuck's <laughs> sake. Because yeah, I'm always doing what can be done. Another hole in one when I on a winner's free call it a victory. They have James Avery in this. When he showed up, my reaction was, aww. <laughs> the best comedy reaction, yeah. yeah. Yeah, the best comedy reaction is when you're just sad. Yeah. <laughs> but he did have the best line in this. Where, what was it? He called them a couple of pussies or something. A couple of pussies having a pity party. Yeah, pussies having a pity party. What are you? couple of pussies having a pity party. Best line in this stupid movie. It was the only thing that was funny, and it was only because he said it. Yeah, if it wasn't one of the other characters, I wouldn't care, but hearing James Avery say that is pretty funny. There's a pretty depressing <laughs> waste of talent in this movie. It's Terry Crews. Yeah, Terry Crews. Yeah. You've got Terry Crews, Terry Why? Cox. Yeah. I mean, Face on Love, like I said, he's been decent in other things, but he's bloody awful in this. <laughs> No one is good in this. Like, James Avery, that line was funny, but he's not in it No, very he's, much. he's like in two scenes, same with Terry Crews. Terry Crews just goes in and does the dance you see him do, yeah. and any kind of, but anything else is just, it's nothing. I like when Terry Crews shows up, I misheard the line, and I thought, she's like, what are you doing here? I thought you had a life. <laughs> hey, where? I thought you had a life. Get out of this movie, boy. <laughs> They, um, at one point, decide they're going to have a plot, and, uh, and Jeffrey Jones hires two dwarf assassins to take out C-Note. So they set up a bomb at Andy Milanakis' uh, birthday party. <laughs> So that happens. Yeah, mm-hmm. they do this weird joke because it's it's Tony Cox's character that, that that this happens with. Like, first of all, this raises so many questions. Like, if if they hired him as an assassin, why do they think that the best course of action to, to create this assassination plot is to strap a wad of C4 below the stage <laughs> and blow up about half the residents of this golf course? <laughs> they had no other assassins. They're really bad place. assassins. <laughs> and then, of course. There's the whole idea of get of them getting away, because they're not exactly conspicuous by any stretch of the imagination. No. They do a really stupid gag when, when the bomb explodes, because Andy picks it up and throws it into Jeffrey Jones's car. It's again. a lot of airtime there, by the way. Like, it's, it's way up there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's quite a throw. And it's so telegraphed that it's going to be Jeffrey Jones's car. It's like, yes, you're doing the stock joke, and you're doing yeah. it badly. Yeah, they barely have him, like, he just kind of mentions it in passing, oh, those are my car. You blew up my car! The deal's off! I'm not paying you one penny more, you little prick. Yeah, he, he doesn't really seem to have a huge emotional reaction to that. No one seems to have a huge emotional reaction to nearly getting blown the fuck up. Mm-hmm. No, yeah. it's never mentioned again till the end. First of all, Jeffrey Jones' delivery of, like, you blew up my car, he's saying it so quiet. <laughs> like, his yeah, mom yeah. is in the next room kind of quiet. But like, his I performance don't... is like that. It just feels like he's just delivering it in very hushed whispers. Yeah, like, he doesn't want people to know he's in the movie, is the thing. <laughs> Can you understand why in the movie where he falls off his horse into some horse shit that just happens be there in the next car. That whole they scene had... was horseshit. <laughs> well, th- all right. How do they win their fucking croquet ho- horse golf, whatever? Yeah. Where, like, at one point, that guy falls off his horse, then tackles Jeffrey Jones off his horse. Apparently, this was legal because he tackles him, and then they get a shot, and then they win, and everyone. Yeah, he, hit, he hits it right into. The, he yeah. hits it and right and he's not on a horse. I'm very sure you can't do that. No, no. none of this seemed legal in, in the slightest. Oh uh, man, Jeffrey Jones. Such a cheater. Now we win by cheating. Yeah. <laughs> a bunch of assholes. Everyone's an asshole in this movie. I side with no one. Meet yourself a nice little girl and settle your butt down somewhere. I'll have you know I think I might have found me one. Mm. 
I hope it's not one of them little nasty video skank types again. Speaking of assholes, C Note's mom. <laughs> oh my god. This going back to the fantastic representation of women in this movie. Yeah. Because oh. Jeffrey Jones has a lawyer on C Note's case during this movie, and you can tell that she's going to be the love interest because she's the apparently the only black person working at this at this golf place. So yeah. she fools for C Note inexplicably because Let's just say that Big Boy's performance here is one of the least charismatic things I've ever seen. <laughs> he's, he's such a cardboard cutout. He is the least presence in this movie, like, out of everyone. Yeah. Yeah. You, you can tell their love scene is meant to be intimate because the camera's about a foot away from their face. <laughs> <laughs> Like the same reaction to watching dead dad footage as he does with her, as he does with getting rejected from the clubs. He never changed his expression. I spent five million on my house. I didn't give any to my mom, but she doesn't deserve it. Yeah. <laughs> Horrible person. The mom, yeah, I think she is the were... worst. Like in a sea of shit, that was one of the worst lines ever. What she says. You running around town with your big fancy law degree and your your power suits, spending your time in a courtroom instead of a bedroom. Your eggs aren't getting any fresher. Sweet potato pie. Excuse you? <laughs> it's amazing advice considering that she spends much of the movie chastising C-Note for his career choice of being a rapper. Like, you should settle down and start a family. While you, who has spent several years in law school getting an education and a proper job, you should be staying at home in the kitchen. It's like, it, you might as well have just said that. It was it was a staggeringly offensive line. It was terrible. Oh. It was, and this isn't a movie where it just relies on stereotypes to be funny. And that really? was the, the worst. Awful yeah. stereotypes. I mean, should we mention that this is directed by a white guy? I was yeah. just gonna say, you can super tell this was directed by a white dude. We're gonna hit all the cliches of black cinema. Like, yeah, yeah. Like when, when you cut to the mom in the kitchen, she's making fried chicken yeah. for him. It just yeah. hands over it. Nothing is left untouched except maybe a drag act. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we, were just, we were just saying like, it needs Medea to lighten this movie up. Get some jokes in it or something. <laughs> Hallelujah! They're so bad at attempting jokes in the movie, it's, it's unreal. Even the stuff that seems basic, they will find some way of completely fucking up the execution in terms of editing and, and sort of choreographing it. It's never surprising, and it's never amusing accidentally. <laughs> no. Every time you think that they've hit everything, they find something new. To the point where it ends on a prison rape joke. Because mm. yeah. they hadn't hit something like that yet. Because either your ass or the remote. Oh, yeah. but it took them 80 minutes to get a nut shot in. <laughs> On a winner's free call in a yeah, they, they were showing restraint in there. Yeah, well, there was a cut nut shot, too. Yeah, they showed it. He hired the assassins. But then, like, it only comes after they're arresting him for hiring the assassins. <laughs> and then the assassins get off scot free. Yeah, the, yeah, there's an assassin who points him out as the one who hired him, but apparently he's good to go. <laughs> like, well, you set off a bomb and tried to kill people, but he's the one who hired them. Like,. He's <laughs> what? He's a dwarf, no witnesses, bro. Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Would you guys say if Wait, we there's... forgot to mention White Caddy. He was yes. your caddy. Oh, yes, I forgot he existed. He was yeah. such a non-presence. Human Kendo, Cam Gigadent, who uh, who was in Twilight as the as the bad guy in the first one. I, I didn't even remember him. I had to ask you. I was like, has he been in yeah. anything? Yeah. Been in stuff? He's your caddy, I guess. He was seen as caddy, and he yeah. smiles a lot and is boring. We yeah. hypothesize that the only reason that this character existed is because they didn't want a black character as a caddy, considering the whole the father is the caddy subplot. So they just had token white dude. Yeah. <laughs> Kendall white dude with no personality. Yeah. And, and apparently his arc is that, oh, he gets to play golf. Yeah. Like, that was his whole arc. So you know, it's like, you, you should art. play golf instead of being a caddy. You're so good. It's like, maybe one day. <laughs> and he's got more emotion than he gave. <laughs> he tags along at the end of the movie because there's this big sort of confrontation, this bet between Jeffrey Jones and C-Note, you know, winner takes the golf club. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> and it's like, oh man, got the stakes high here, so invested. <laughs> and then the movie has to stop because, oh, we got white dude Caddy. He's playing along too, because I guess we care about this. Yeah. And, it, and it doesn't go anywhere, because he, he fires it straight into the lake. With him and every once in a while in this movie, it would cut to someone doing a reaction shot, and then you'd be like, wait, were they in this movie? Yeah. Was, uh, were they in this previous that to this? That betting guy, yeah. yeah. I don't remember if they were in the... And him, I would forget he existed every uh, time. I'd be yeah. like, oh yeah, I guess he has a plot going on. Yeah, yeah. they gave him no character, no personality whatsoever. He is, li he is literally just... White dude that just happens to work there. They have a little Wayne cameo in there for some reason, like they're shooting a music yeah. video with him. Just ugh, why? <laughs> um, would you guys say there was anything redeemable about this? Uh, Fuck no. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I, I struggle to think of anything that was worth even in a funny way watching. Bunch of pussies having a pity party. <laughs> See, the thing is, this, this is a... You know, she, at what point does she dress like this? This is the lawyer lady? Yeah, she doesn't wear that. They put her in a sexy schoolgirl outfit on the oh, cover. You know, what like, the shit is that? Dress like that. I, I love how Tony Cox, he's on the cover here, but yeah. they don't bother to give him billing yeah. on the top there. No, they needed to give a higher uh, a higher billing to Andy Milanakis playing yet another, like, small boy, perhaps? Yeah. It's kind of ambiguous what his age is, but it seems to be supposed to be like yeah, a, a His teenager. character just disappears, too, once they take him to the club. And then he got some grills. He got yeah. to go to a PG-13 strip club. <laughs> yeah, he acts like a jackass after done. For a movie that had so many characters, it felt like so little happened. Yeah, brush yeah. plots for a lot of them, like a lawyer woman's like, oh yeah, I quit working for Jeffrey Jones because I want to work for truthful people like you bunch of cheaters. <laughs> <laughs> Ha happening in the middle of the six billionth montage in this movie. <laughs> More montages than Baywatch. Uh, I can tell what the pitch for this movie was. It's basically, what if black people went to a golf course? It, was it turns out it will be a very lame version of Caddyshack, where we didn't even bother to have jokes in it. <laughs> <laughs> well, one of you said like it felt like a sketch. Yeah. Like it started and it felt like it was a sketch on something. Yeah, the, the mm -hmm. first scene where, where they're going into the golf course, it feels like a sketch that you would see on a TV show, and then it feels like someone said, that's good, now we're going to write the rest of the movie afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> it's so, it's such an empty movie to begin with when you look past, well, it's hard to look past all the, all the blatant sexism and stereotypes going around, but I mean, you know, black audiences are very underserved by Hollywood. You know, you don't get too many movies that have a predominantly black cast in them. Mm -hmm. But they deserve so much better than this. There's so, so many really crap uh, comedies aimed at black people that are like this, and it feels mm. like they're just going for like the low-hanging fruit, and, and they shouldn't put any effort in it, simply it, because it's a black cast. It feels like lazy, lazy pandering. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, and, and that's just generally the theme that you get throughout the entire movie, is that no one's really trying. Everyone, everyone is aware that they're in Who's Your Caddy, <laughs> and they're aware of just how bad it really is. It's a paycheck movie. Everyone yeah. is a paycheck performance. Mm. Even even James Avery, even though he had the funniest line, it was not like any sort of no, big thing. No, it's for just him. that one line. He's yeah. just in the background for most of them. I think he said like, "Oh yeah, I was there and I saw his dad did good at golf." Like that's his whole character. He, he, got, his two, he yeah. got his two days worth of work. And exactly. He, he didn't even the, throw uh, Jeffrey Jones out the door for being a pedophile. <laughs> 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 it's it's alright because he went to jail, and I guess. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So, uh, uh, do you guys have any final thoughts on who's your caddy? <laughs> Says it. <all. laughs> so, would either of you recommend it? No! <laughs> All right, don't watch this, guys. Watch Caddyshack 2. I hear that's a laugh riot by comparison. <laughs> it's better than this. It has to be. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs>
couple of pussies having a pity party. 